today I'm going to be showing you how to make our Mother's Day cardigan. This cardigan is worked entirely in one piece, so it's a great beginner project. The stitch pattern is just a two row repeat work throughout. It's a full length sleeve and I've added a cuff just to pull in the bottom of the sleeve so it's not so baggy. It has a nice thick border along the bottom and just a nice thin edge around the rest of the piece. So we work this from the bottom up. Starting at the back, we work our sleeves and our front panels all together as one piece. So the yarn I'm working with for this cardigan is Cabot by Sugarbush Yarns. And it is a blend of Pima cotton and linen and it comes like this in a hank. Now if you've never worked with a hank you do need to roll it up like this to be able to work with it. So I have this yarn available in my shop for purchase for purchase but you can use any cotton blend that you want. I just do suggest you pick out a cotton blend for this project and this is a DK weight yarn which is a light number three. So I have a video tutorial that shows you if you've never worked with a hank before, how to get it all rolled up like this. And I'll have the link in the description box for that, as well as the links for the yarn. And also I'll have the blog post there for figuring out substitutions. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out the yarn you're gonna use for this project. Now the next important step is making a gauge swatch. So I'm using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and you may need to adjust your hook size to meet the pattern gauge. So we're gonna get started with our swatch. Before you begin the pattern at all, make a swatch and block it so that we're sure that you're making the correct size. So our stitch pattern is worked in multiples of six. So I am gonna chain a total of 24. Next, I'll be working a single crochet in the eighth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll chain one, skip a chain, and work a single crochet in the next. Chain five, and we'll skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the next chain, a single, chain one, skip a chain, single, chain five, Skip three, one, two, three, a single, chain one, skip a chain, single. And now we're ending with two chains. So we'll chain two and work a double crochet in the final chain. Now we'll turn and chain one, work a single crochet in the first, chain three, and work a cluster 
in the chain one space. So go through, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, go back a third time, pulling through two. You should now have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all four. Chain three. And in the third chain of the chain five, we'll work a single crochet, chain three, and in the next chain one space, we'll work another cluster, yarn over, go through, pull through two, and you should have four on the hook and chain three. Work a single crochet in the third chain of the chain five. Chain three. And another cluster in the chain one space. So yarn over, go through, pulling up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Four loops on the hook, chain three, and we'll work a single crochet in that turning chain. And now we'll chain five. We'll work a single crochet in the third chain of that chain three. chain one, skip over the cluster and a single crochet in the first chain of the chain three, chain five. Work a single crochet in the third chain of the chain three, chain one, skip over the cluster and a single in that first chain. Repeat that across. Chain two and a double crochet in the single. And now we're just repeating row two and three for our stitch pattern. So it's just a simple two row repeat. We'll chain one and turn. Work a single crochet in the first. Chain three. Work a cluster in the chain one space. 3 DC cluster, chain 3, single crochet in the third chain, chain 3, DC cluster, yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through 2, Yarn over, pull through two, and repeat that along. Okay, now we'll chain five, and we're repeating row three again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work that again, and we wanna get a little bit bigger piece here. So I'm going to continue to work a few more rows here off camera and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I'm ending on a row two. So I've worked one, two, three, four cluster rows. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go block this. I'm going to wet it and I'm going to pin it to my mat and that is the measurement we're going to take. So I'm going to go wet this and block it and I'll show you how it's going to look. Okay, so I've wet my piece. The idea is, is you want to stretch it so that your chains are stretched out and your clusters are going above each other. So I just need to fiddle to kind of get it all to look even. 
And then I'm gonna give it a measure for you because this is what, when you make your swatch and you stretch it out a little bit so that it looks nice and pulled apart like mine, you want it to measure, it's about five, five inches by three and a half inches. So that is the size that your gauge swatch should be. So before you start doing anything else, I want you to get your gauge swatch done. If you can't get it to equal, looking nice what I have, you're gonna wanna adjust your hook size. So if you crochet tighter or looser than me, you just need to adjust your hook accordingly. So if you're a really loose crocheter, you mean, may need to go to a four millimeter hook. If you're a really tight crocheter, you may need to go up to a five or a five and a half. So just adjust your hook as needed and make your swatch before you begin because this is what's gonna determine the finish size of your garment. To begin working our back panel, we're starting with our 3.75 millimeter hook. And then once we work into our beautiful lace stitch pattern, we'll be going up to a 4.5 millimeter hook. So again, make sure you're referring to that gauge swatch if you've needed to alter this hook size. If you've gone with a different size, let's say you've gone with a 3.5, or sorry, a four instead of a 4.5, you may wanna drop down to a 3.25 or a 3.5 hook. So for the size that we're working on, we need to chain 110. Now I'm not gonna chain the whole length because that will be way too much to show you on camera. But if you're making the same size as me, you're gonna to wanna to go with 110. Now definitely check your pattern if you're working on a different size to see how much you need to so change. For this demonstration, it's a little bit different than the gauge swatch because we're gonna be working off our rows of single crochet. So I'm gonna chain 26. Okay, so I've chained up 26. Now we'll want to work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And we'll just work single crochet stitches all the way across. So if you're working up your full back panel, you'll end up here with 109 single crochet stitches. And for the smaller swatch I'm working on here, you'll just have 25. So I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna work that with 109 stitches. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now we're just working single crochet stitches. Chain one at the beginning of every row, and then we're just working single crochets in every stitch across. So you wanna do this for a total of 10 rows. So this is row number two. We'll just take a look at the actual back piece here. So what you want is a total of 10, and it's gonna look something like this. You could alter that up for sure if you want, making it thicker or thinner. But as you can see, it's a big stretch that we're working through and you're working through 109 stitches for 10 rows. So I'm gonna complete those off camera and then I'm gonna meet you up just to start into the stitch pattern with you. Okay, so I've worked up my 10 rows and I'm ending on my wrong side, so my stitch pattern will begin on the right side. Now what's a good idea, just to keep track throughout this pattern, is just put a little marker, stitch marker, pin it to your right side so that you know for sure what is your right side when you're working throughout. So you can always go back and refer. I don't have one on me right now, but 
I would just pin one or pin a safety pin or just anything that will just remind you that this is the right side. So now what we're going to do is change to the larger hook. So we're going to chain five. And this is going to count as a double crochet and a chain two. So I'm skipping the first two stitches, so this stitch and this stitch. And in the next stitch, I'll be working a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, work a single crochet in the next. And then this will be my repeat pattern. We'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five. I'll skip three stitches, one, two, three, and in the next, I'll work a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, work a single crochet in the next, and I'm gonna repeat that all the way along. So I'm gonna meet you up. So do your chain five, skip three, and then single, skip, single. Once you get to the end, you should have just two stitches remaining. And what we'll do is chain two and work a double crochet. We'll skip a stitch, work a double crochet in the last stitch. And then we'll turn. Okay, so now we're to the wrong side of our work. And basically we're gonna start repeating our stitch pattern, row two and three, which we work through with our gauge swatch, but I'm gonna go through it with you. So we'll work, did I chain one? We'll chain one and turn. And this is not included as a stitch. We'll work a single crochet in that first stitch. Chain three, one, two, three. And now we'll work our 3DC cluster in our chain one space. So yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go through the same space, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through all four. And we chain three. And in the third chain of our chain five, one, two, three, we'll do a single crochet. Chain three. And in the next chain one space, we'll work another 3DC cluster. Chain three. And we're just repeating this all the way along. So in the third chain, one, two, three, we're working a single crochet. I'm coming to the end. I've already chained three and in our turning chain here, we're just working a single crochet. Chain three. Okay. And then for row three, we're chaining five, one, two, three, four, five. And again, that counts as a DC and a chain two. And now what we're doing is we're working a single crochet in that third chain. Chain one, we're skipping over the cluster and we're working a single crochet in the first chain, that chain three. Then we'll be chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. We skip over the single crochet and work a single crochet in the third chain of that chain three. Chain one, work a single crochet. Chain two, five. And work, a, skipping over, working a single crochet. Chain one, over the cluster, and a single crochet. 
And this is just a simple two row repeat throughout the pattern. Okay, so I'm getting to the end here and we're gonna chain two and work a double crochet in the last stitch. And now we'll repeat row two and three for the pattern. So what we wanna do, we're looking at our back. I'm working a total of 38 rows. So an easy way to count your rows is by the clusters and counting by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, etc. And you want a total of 38 rows before we begin working the sleeve pattern. So you'll have a bit of work ahead of you to get all of that work completed. So once you have that done, then we'll meet back up again to work on the sleeves because all this is worked in one piece. We do the back, we then work the sleeves out, we chain out for the sleeves, we work the sleeve in the front, the back panel till we're half the sleeve width. Then we work, we have to make a neck opening, we work the front panel in the next half of the sleeves and then we bring it in just for those front panels. So it's all worked together in one large piece. So if we just take a look, here is my back panel, okay, that I've worked. Then here's my sleeves. As you can see, the sleeves are coming out each side. We keep pulling it. I've worked half the sleeve and then I need to make a neck opening. Our neck opening is about three inches then we have to continue to work. We separate up at this point to work this side and then this side, but it's still all in one piece. Once our sleeve width is done, then we mark off just to complete then the front panel. So then we work the front panel. We work down the front panel until we get then to the band. And you add, this can really show you how much we need to block this out and stretch it to get it to the correct measurement. And when you're working with a cotton or a natural fiber, you'll find that you can block and stretch things out really well. Acrylic does not block as well. It tends to want to shrink back to that original measurement. It's still important to block, but I find when you're working with natural fibers, it really turns out a lot better. So the cotton is, this will block and stretch out really well and keep the shape that we block it to, which is really important. Otherwise, you'd probably want to go a lot bigger and you just aren't going to get as nice a finish without getting this nice and blocked. So now continue working your back panel and then we'll go step by step through each of the remaining steps here. Okay, so you want to keep working until you have about 18 inches in length. Now you could go longer if you want a longer cardigan. That would be fine. But for this one here, we're going to stop at 18 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a separate ball. So I'm just gonna leave my working yarn here and I'm gonna take a new ball and just join up here into my single crochet stitch right in the corner. Okay, so I've joined that and now I'm gonna chain out 60 and then fasten off. So once you've chained 60, you just are gonna fasten that off. And that's just gonna set up your left sleeve. So we don't need to worry about that now. It'll all be ready for when we work across. So then we just wanna come back over to our working yarn.
and we're gonna chain out 65 for the right sleeve. So I've chained out 65 and now we're gonna work in the eighth chain from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're working a single crochet. We'll chain one, skip a chain and work a single crochet. Chain five, one, two, three, four, five. And now I'll skip over three chains, one, two, three, and work a single crochet, chain one, skip a chain, work a single crochet, chain five, And then we'll skip three, one, two, three. And in the next, we'll do a single crochet. Chain one and a single crochet. So just keep repeating that all the way along the chain and then I'll meet you up again when we get to the body. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just coming to the end of my chain so I've worked my single, skip, single. You should have two chains here remaining. We're chaining five. And now we're just jumping right back into this pattern where we'll do our single here for our cluster. Chain one, we're skipping over the cluster and working a single crochet in that first chain of the chain three. Chain five. And we're doing the same thing. Chain one, skip over the cluster. Okay, so you're just gonna wanna keep working your pattern across. So chain five, and then work your single chain one single. And then once we get across the body, again, I'll meet you up when we hit the chain for the left sleeve. Okay, so now I'm getting to the chain for the left sleeve. So just like we did on the other side, we skip two chains. So one, two, and I've already chained five. So then in the third chain, we're working our single crochet, chain one, skip a chain, and a single crochet in the next. And then we chain five, You need to skip three, one, two, three, and then work a single, chain one, skip a chain, and a single. And we're just gonna do this all the way across. You might wanna weave that end if it's coming loose. One, two, three. So just repeat this all the way along your chain. Okay, so when you get to the end, you wanna chain two. You should have two chains remaining and we're doing a double crochet in the final chain. Chain one and turn, and then we're just back to our pattern that we've been working. Meow. 
Okay, so chain three. And then you'll work your cluster. Chain three. In the third chain, you're gonna work a single crochet. Chain three. And another cluster. And chain three. And we're just repeating this all the way along. So now you're working your sleeve, your back, okay, I'm the wrong way. Your sleeves your, and your back all together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna work now our sleeves until we get the desired half length of our sleeve. Okay, so what I wanted to do here is mark the center of my piece. So I counted over my clusters because that just makes it easy. So I counted over 19 and marked it and I counted over 19 from my other side and marked it. Now if you're making a different size, it's going to be a little bit different, but I have, I will indicate in the pattern where to mark. And now what we're going to do is work over to our marker. So I'm going to chain five. So I've chained five and we're going to just keep working our pattern. So I'm working a single crochet in the third chain of the chain three, chain one, skipping over the cluster and working a single crochet in the first chain of the chain three, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain five. And I'm just going to keep working this across and I'm going to meet you up when I get over towards the marker. Okay, so I'm coming up to the marker. I'm not quite to it because I want to actually end before the marker. So I've worked my single chain one single and now we're going to finish off the repeat with our chain two and working our double in that final single crochet stitch okay so we end up having a nice about two and a half let me actually just measure it out for you just to show you how big your neck opening is actually going to be it's going to be about three inches, so about three inches in total, um, which is really nice to just, it will help go around your neck nice and just hang nice in the front. So now things are really easy. We're just going to be working the next um, rows, just working now from here across until we finish up the sleeve. So that's the next section and we want the next part of our sleeve to equal this part. So we're working another eight inches. What's more accurate though is if we look at our row. So we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more cluster rows. So if you look at it that way, you just want to keep working that along until you get that section worked. Next, what we're gonna do when we start our left side is we're actually gonna join in the single crochet right over here and then work the same going back and forth in the stitch pattern until again we have eight inches or nine rows of the cluster. So I'm going to come back and show you that. I'm going to roll off, actually, I don't want to break my yarn to show you. 
So I'm just gonna go roll off another one of my hanks because I'm working now into my third. So I'm thinking that for this project, we're definitely gonna need probably about five to finish this off. Okay, so now before I would start this side, I would finish this side, but because I wanna show you here and I'll work the rest of my piece up tonight before I show you the next step, I just wanna show you how you're gonna join over I rolled off another cake, so I have that all ready to go. It's good if you use work from two separate balls anyways, so you can join on a new one. So here's my markers. So I wanna go and join into the single crochet stitch. And we know for our pattern, when we start off, we need to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we just get working into our pattern. So a single crochet in the third chain, chain one, single crochet in the first chain of the chain three, chain five. And we're just repeating the pattern that you should be really familiar with by now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is how you can now see. There's our neck opening and we're gonna work eight inches of work and I'm gonna work eight inches of work over here, our total of nine cluster rows. And then once I have this sleeve portion completed, we're gonna meet back up because then what we need to do is work down the front panel. So we just take a quick peek. It's really easy to follow these cluster stitches up the side because once we have our sleeve finished, we want to stop working on the sleeve. We want to come back in here and have this even to finish the front panel and just work down the front of the cardigan. So it's really, this is a really simple design to keep it all going in one piece and then we're just going to have these sides to seam up when we're all finished. So I'm gonna work up my, the rest of my sleeve portions now off camera, and I'll meet you back up again for the next step. Okay, so I've continued to work my sleeve and front panel until I have a total of 18 puff stitch or cluster stitch rows. So in total, I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. And what I did here is I fastened off and I left a tail. And the next thing I did is I've already added my stitch marker where I need to join on. So this is, our right side, and if I just move my piece up here, we can see that our back panel, here's the edge, and all we wanna do is follow that up. And in that single crochet stitch, we just add our marker, so we know that we need to come out to have our back, our front and our back the same. The rest is the sleeve only. So now what we want to do is work our front panel here until we equal our back panel that we've already worked. So we're working as many rows to equal our back panel. And it's a much shorter spot um, amount to work, so it should work through fairly quickly. So I'm gonna leave that here actually, and I'm just gonna show you the other side as well. So I've done the same thing with my marker already. I've just followed up 
right here, put my marker. And now for the left side, we don't have to fasten off because we're already on the side that we want to be on. And then we just continue working now between the marker and across. So what I'm going to do is move my camera in a little bit closer and we'll start on our right side first. Okay, so I've already chained five. I've joined my yarn in to the marked stitch, that single crochet, and I've chained five. Then I'm gonna work a single crochet in the third chain, chain one, skip the cluster, work a single crochet, chain five, Do the same thing, work a single crochet in the third chain, chain one, skip over the cluster, and a single crochet. So we're just going to repeat that all the way across. And once we're to the end, we're going to chain two and work a double crochet. Okay, and then we chain one and turn. Okay, so we're working across again to our marked stitch. So we'll single crochet in the first, chain three. We'll work a cluster in our chain one space. Chain three. Work a single crochet in the third chain of the chain five. And all this stitch pattern is just a review. Chain three, work a cluster. And chain three. And so we're just working across. We're just working in our stitch pattern down the front panel so that it equals the back. So now I'm just gonna leave this, finish this off myself, and I'm gonna just go over to the other side and show you how you're working the left side. Okay, so I've grabbed onto my working yarn because on our left side, we didn't fasten off because we were in position. So I've already chained five. And we'll work a single crochet in the third chain chain one, skip over the cluster, and a single crochet in the first chain of the chain three. And we'll chain five, skipping over the single and doing a single in the third chain, chain one, skip over the cluster, and a single in the first chain. One, two, three, four, five. And we're just repeating that all the way across and I'll meet you up when we get to our marked stitch. Okay, so once you get all the way across, I've worked my single, chain one single, and now we'll chain two. And we're gonna work a double crochet in that final stitch. And I'm just gonna leave my marker in there for now until I work a little bit more. Okay, and then you chain one and turn. And again, just working through the stitch pattern. So work a single crochet in the first, chain three. Work your cluster in the chain one space. Chain three. Work a single in the third chain of the chain five, chain three, and a cluster. And so all we're doing now is working our repeat pattern, our two row repeat pattern, until we have an equal length of 
our pattern the same as the back and then we'll have to work that single crochet band once we finish this but basically we're wanting our front to match up with our back so if we just do a little review here on how many how many rows we had so we've got you can count by twos for every cluster for every cluster row so two four six eight ten 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. We want to do the same thing for our front panel. For both the right and left side. So I'm going to work these off, these off camera and hopefully I can finish those up tonight and then we can meet up for blocking. Okay, so I've been working away on my front panels and I have a total of 38 rows. And once you've completed your 38 rows, so you're ending on your cluster row, we're going to switch over to our smaller hook, which is... A 3.75. I dropped it down quite a bit um, just because the stitch pattern pulls in a lot more than the single crochet stitches. So now an easy way to figure out how many single crochet stitches you need without looking at your pattern, I have it in the pattern for you, is count your clusters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you want to multiply that by six. So eight times six is 48, plus we need to add one stitch to that. So I need to work across 49 stitches. And I wanted to show you how to do this. So we'll chain one and turn. We're gonna work a single crochet in the first stitch. And then in our chain three, we're going to add two single crochet. In the top of the cluster, we'll add a single crochet. And in the next chain three space, we'll add two. In the single crochet, a single crochet. And in the chain three space, two single crochet. In our cluster, one single crochet and then two in the chain three space. Okay, so this is what we're doing all the way across. So I'm just gonna complete that and I'll meet you up at the end. So to the end, we're just working a single crochet in the final stitch. And if you've done the pattern correctly across, you should have 49 single crochet stitches. We'll chain one and turn. And we'll work single crochet stitches all the way across. Now we want to end up on our right side. So even though we began the back panel with only 10 rows of single crochet, we need to end on our 11th row for the front panel because we want to end on our right side. So we're going to do 11 rows and then what we'll end up doing is going back and doing um, a row just across our finished edge so that it ends up that the back actually has 11 as well. So all you're doing now is just working across single crochet stitches. So 49 for each row and do a total of 11 rows. Okay, so here is my piece blocked out. Now you wanna take a look at the schematic in your pattern for the size you're making. And what I do is I wet my piece. I lay it down on my mats. 
Now I really need to get a few more mats. I didn't have enough to do the complete piece in one go, which was a little bit of a pain, but I have four of these big mats, so I wanna get another four so that I am able to do big pieces like this all in one go. So I start down um, at my back. I think that's the easiest way to begin. And I go with my measurement here. So I had 27 inches. So I started out by pinning that. Then I look at my next measurement, which is going upwards. So the length. So I needed to pin this out 19 inches. So I measured up and I pinned it and I did the same on that side. And then what you can do is start pinning out those sides, pulling out and you can see how nice the stitch pattern looks now when it's all pulled out. The blocking is so important for lace because it really needs to stretch it out to its proper dimension. Plus it helps us actually really see the design. So once I got all of the back done, then I moved up to the sleeve. I'm just gonna move my camera here so you can see the sleeve portion a bit better. So the next section I took on was the sleeves. So again, I went out with my measurement going out here. So the sleeve length is 15 inches. So I measured it out, stretched it out to 15 inches. And then the width of the total sleeve for this size was 18 inches. So then again, I had to go to the top to the 18 and then make sure that it was measuring the 15 across the top as well. So then once you get that established, then you work through all the edges, stretching it all out perfectly and do that for the other side. And also the neck piece of so the measurement I took was from the bottom going up to the neck. So just the lace part was 28 inches. That wasn't including the band. So the band is, let me just measure it, is about two. So in total 30 inches from the neck down to the bottom. And then I started working down part of the neck, but I ran out of space so I couldn't do all of the front panels so now that's what I'm going to block this morning is I'm going to this is all dried now so I'm going to take my pins out and then I'm going to work through the front panels blocking them. Okay so I just completed my front panels so what I did to start off with the front panels is I took my measurement from the neck opening and I wanted to come down here my 30 inches in total. So I did that for both sides and then I took and I also made sure I had about three inches in the space in between and then I measured out 12 inches. For every repeat you have about an inch and a half and that's an easy way to calculate it out, but you'll have your schematic that's gonna give you all of those measurements in the pattern. And for this side as well, 12 inches, I measured up at the top where the sleeves are, the 12 inches across as well to make sure I was coming down evenly. And as you look at your, your clusters, you just wanna try and keep them as straight as possible as you're blocking it. It does take time to block all of this piece and put it all together. And I've used a lot of pins, especially because I found I needed to kind of put quite a few to get this, the sides and stuff to be straight. So you do need to take your time and making sure all of your measurements are correct is gonna help when you get to seaming because you want your front panel to equal your back panel. We want all those stitch patterns to match up when we're seaming. So just be sure to take your time and block it and pin it well and make sure you're taking all those measurements, even if you need to keep measuring up as you go that, you've, that you're staying on track. The lines do help you to see that you're keeping everything correct. So now I'm just gonna let that completely dry before I remove all my pins and then we'll meet back up again for seaming and doing the final edging on our sleeves and also the edging we're gonna add 
um, around the collar area. Okay, so I wanted to show you the cardigan all laid out. It's been blocked. I've taken the pins and mats away. So this is how your piece should look when it's all finished. Now, right now I have the, the right side facing up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to those front panels and I'm gonna fold them right over on top of the back panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so now you can see it folded in half. My sides are lined up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seam across my arm here all the way down and now I'm not going to seam this very last section I'll leave a, each side open a little bit just for flow you don't have to you could seam all the way down but I'm going to leave a little bit open I really like that look and I'm going to go do the same on this side seam and seam all the way down so I will do a close-up of that as I'm seaming because I really want you to be sure you're matching up the stitch pattern as you seam it. Okay, so I left a long tail here. You won't have tails for all of them, but if you've left some long tails, that's great. If not, you just have to attach a piece. So here's my sleeve. I have a tail at the sleeve, so I'm gonna start here. And when you look at your pattern, you're gonna see that you've got your clusters and your chains. So I just want you to be sure when you're seaming it, when you're at the chain part, you go through the chains on both sides. Okay, we're just weaving it through. And then when you get to the cluster, make sure you're going through the stitch of the cluster on this side and make sure the stitch of the cluster on the other side because you want those clusters and chains to match up so you're really just kind of doing the best you can here just to so this one here we've got the chain on the one side and the single crochet oh there's a little bit of a knot in this yarn so it's not going through well for me. Okay, so as you can see, this side and this side are a little bit different because one is starting on one row and, and one's ending on the other. So as long as you're making sure the clusters are matching up as you go along, and just seaming the other sections. That's gonna be the important thing. And I'm gonna have to try to work this little knot out because it is not wanting to pull through and I'm gonna make a mess of my work if I don't get that unknotted. So that's basically what you're doing though. I don't need to go through all that with you. You're just gonna work all the way, keeping it as even as possible and then we're gonna work down the side and then you can leave as much as you want unworked. I may leave more than just the band unworked. I may come up and leave a little bit more than that than maybe this much. But that's really up to you how much of a space you want to leave there at the bottom. So I'm going to continue seaming up both sides of my cardigan and then we'll meet up again to work on the edging. Okay, so I finished seaming my cardigan all together. You can see my seam here. It's a good idea always to give it a steam afterwards and that will just flatten up this little bump you can see with the seam. So the next Thing I started to do was my edging for the side. So for the edging I'm using my smaller hook, my 3.75, and I'm just joined to my bottom right corner and I'm single crocheting evenly up the side. So I've worked up my one side already. Okay so as I've been working up this side each side is going to look a little different. So this side here 
In this space, I'm working two, sort of the larger spaces. And then we get this space here where I want to put two, so sort of one for this, one for this. And then we're into a bigger space and we'll have two. And then I'm doing two again. Two in this space. Two in the larger spaces. But the important thing is, is that yours looks even. Like when I hold this, it's not, you can tell that there's not too many stitches or too few stitches pulling it in. The cardigan's able to just hang without bunching the side at all. So you may need to play around with it to get it to look even. But once you kind of get a pattern going that looks good, just stick with that. And I'm going to keep working. Side. We'll get two. And then in the smaller space, do two. And in the larger space, do two. And that should keep you even again, like the other side. So two sort of in that smaller area and then two in the bigger areas. Okay, so I'm just going to complete that and I'll meet you up when I finish this. Okay, side. and I'm just coming to the end and then you want to work across the band in single crochets. And I already did this before I started. I'm sorry, I should have shown you this um, before now. I did work that single crochet edge across the back. So this is my front panel, but I worked a final um, single crochet stitch just along that back panel and that gave us that 11 rows like our front panels. So you can go ahead and do that after you finish the edging because it won't affect it but you just want to finish off that back panel with a nice edge. Okay, so now you could just leave it like this, but I want at least three rows. You want to end on an odd row just so you're on the right side. So I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to work back single crochets all the way and you can really go as thick as you want with this band here, but I would suggest a minimum of three. So I'm going to go ahead and work my rows off, just following all the way up the side panels and the neck. Okay, so next we're going to work on the sleeve cuff. So I finished my three rows of edging and I like how it's looking. It looks great and I just fastened it off. And I'll show you how my cuff looks on this side for my sleeve. So I've brought it in quite a bit so that it's not so big. Um, if you wanna keep it more like a bell sleeve, then you can do that. Finish the edge more like we did the side edge of the cardigan. But if you want it to come in a little bit tighter like this, this is how I've done it. I've worked in total 38 stitches around the sleeve opening. So I've joined it to the seam and we'll work a single crochet. And then in our big gaps, I'm working two single crochet and that is all so, but there so far I have so far I have three, and then I'll skip over this, the, the big space, four, five. 
So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around and I'm going to count so that I have 38 stitches because that's what I had on the other side. So you want to make sure if you alter up your stitches a bit that at least you have even number on each. Just getting around and this is my 38th stitch. We're going to slip stitch to join. Chain one. And I'm just working in every stitch around. And now for the sleeve cuff, I've done a total of eight rounds. I liked the look of that. Of course, you can alter that up if you want. But to get the same look that I have, I've gone with eight. So I'm just gonna keep working around single crochet rounds with 38 stitches. Okay, so I've worked around my eight rounds and I'm just gonna fasten that off. And then we just need to weave in all of the ends. 